Now, question one is about converting 25 into 8 bit binary. First thing you want to do is remember with 8 bits, we start off at units and then it goes 2s, 4s, 8s, etc., up to 128. Okay, so it goes up in factors of 2. And that's because there's obviously two different values of binary. And then it's a equivalent of going into a shop and actually working out. How many of each can you get in order to make 25? And you can only get one of each one. Okay, so to get 25, we could have 116. Okay, that'll give us 9 left. We then could have an 8. And we could have a 1. Okay, so when you add up these all together, then that should give you your 25. Okay, so that's a wee way of just double checking that you're correct. So that gives you your 25. Okay, so... That, plus that, plus that. Now, question two, they're talking about health and safety, and it's to do with your actual workstation. So, the workstation is obviously where you're sitting at your computer, okay? So, at the desk, your computer's known as your workstation. So, they're really saying, name one other workstation feature, okay? So, you wouldn't be able to talk about blinds or uh, talking about different types of windows just because... It's to do with the workstation feature. So, one could be, and again, it's just name one other and describe. Okay, so you need to actually just describe as well. So don't just name it, you have to describe it, and it's only still worth the one mark. So, here's one example, adjustable monitor. So you can adjust it, and you're not going to, pre and you'll prevent eye strain. You can even talk about preventing getting a sore neck. You've also got an ergonomic keyboard, and that avoids your repetitive strain injury okay so that's a keyboard that's slightly twisted so you're actually sitting more of a natural position with question three well it's one benefit of using biometric now obviously they're very hard to forge okay so if they're hard to forge people can't commit fraud okay you can't have somebody stealing your id because obviously it's fingerprints and retina scan so you can't actually have somebody borrowing it or you can't lose your fingerprints okay which is obviously eliminates any chance of getting lost and sometimes you might forget your password okay so this actually eliminates the, ch the chance of that so you can replace hard to remember passwords okay and obviously these passwords, somebody could look over your shoulder and actually just write them down so that stops that okay so Describe a benefit, you state one thing and then just explain why it's a benefit. Right, question four. A college has just upgraded all the computer equipment used by staff. What should happen if you're disposing? Okay, well, you want to make sure all the data is wiped from the hard disk and you may actually need to physically destroy the hard disk. Okay, so these are all bullet points. Any of these bullet points are absolutely fine, and you might have it slightly worded a different way. Any dis any hazardous waste, you want to actually safely dispose of them. As I've just said, actually physically destroy this hard disk if you can't actually wipe the data off. And make sure when you're actually recycling, you don't have any personal information still stored onto the computer. And you want to actually take out any va valuable metals or any valuable components and you want to try and recycle that as well. Right, here's one that you've seen before. So this is an example of a program in some language called Algo. And they're just asking you, well, to make this user-friendly and more readable, what could you do? Well, if you have a yoke here, I mean, we've got variables that aren't very well described okay, or named. So that's where the use meaningful variable names. We want to also, if you look down here, we want some indentation. Okay, so indentation will make sure that you can actually see the loops within the programs. And you could add some light lines, okay, so some comment lines just to actually describe what the program's doing. But question six, what we've got is a program that's this. It's just really to apply car brakes. Okay, if the distance between the cars is less than 15 metres, okay, and for safety reasons, 
the brake shouldn't be activated if the speed of the car is less than only sorry should only be activated if the speed of the car is less than thirty miles per hour. Okay, so I've given you some pseudocodes, which isn't the easiest to read here. And they're saying that there's two errors within the logic of this, okay? So you just have a wee look through. Now, first the lines are asking for values from the this time it's not from a keyboard, it's actually from a sensor. And it just says here, well if speed of car is less than thirty or distance is less than fifteen, then apply the brake, okay? That should be AND, right? So that's your first, okay? So it has to be if the speed of the car is less than 30 and that distance is less than 15 because you could have a car that's 100 metres away from another car in front and if it's less than 30, then it can still be applying the brakes, okay? And you're wanting to actually have this car eventually stop, so that speed of car, that should actually be zero. Okay, so you're not going to start braking the car until it's just driving 100 miles per hour. So that's where that comes in. So R should be and the speed of the car should, shouldn't be 100, it should be 0. What we've then got is we've then got information to do with the types of test data. So remember, your extreme, that's you testing the boundaries. Okay, so your extreme is 30 and 15. That's your extreme test. So it's right on the border. Anything that's sensible test data that's not extreme, we just call this normal. So it's pretty normal for a car to be going 14 miles per hour and be 8 metres apart and 45 and be going 17. So they're both examples of normal. What isn't normal, okay, is having your car speed going at Bernard miles per hour and being minus 12 metres in front. Okay, so that's exceptional. So it's data that shouldn't be entered. And if it is entered, you want your program to deal with it. But so you could have car speed of 2,000 miles per hour or car speed of minus 23. Okay, so anything that you're testing the actual condition, we call that extreme. Any other sensible information or sensible input, that's normal. And if it's not sensible, that's called exceptional. Right, with this one they've got an example with kind of like scratch here. So it's just really saying repeat four times. So what you're after is we're kind of starting here. It then goes up the way. So it then goes up. It then turns right minus 190. In fact, it doesn't start there at all. It starts here. So minus 190, minus 190 minus 190 and it creates a square okay so always read the question carefully just like I've made that mistake right so what we've got here it starts repeats twice so it moves 30 and then turns 90 so it's facing this way it moves 60 and then it turns 90 minus 90 so it faces that way and it just does that again so it repeats twice okay so for the second time, it just moves 90, turns 90, sorry, moves 30, turns 90, and moves 60. And that's, you've got almost like a wee staircase. Right, next question is a graphics question. What I would recommend you is just always draw out your graphic. And just leave what's that, 600, that's 600. Okay. And it's 8 bits colour, so that just means that each pixel is requires 8 bits. So what we do is we just multiply these numbers together. So the number of pixels is 600 times 600, and it's 8 bit per pixel. And that gives you the number of bits. Now it's just a wee quirk of fate that you're wanting to then divide it back by 8 to get to the number of bytes. So you divide the number of bits by 8 to get to the number of bytes. And then divide the number of bytes by 1024. And that gives you the number of kilobytes, and that's an appropriate unit. Okay, so the number's not too big, and that is question six. How do computer systems represent characters? Well, you could say binary. You could also say ASCII as well. Okay. Now right, here's another one, and it's converting this time binary into decimal. This can be a wee bit off-putting because when you look at it, you've only got six binary numbers 
but we always want to work it out as eight because we always work it out as a bite. So what you do, you still write your reheadings one, two, four, all the way up to one to eight. But what you actually have to do is you then take the very first value and put it here, take the second value. So you work from right to left. Any of the values that you don't have, just put zero down there. And then what you can do is we then just add the numbers in which there's a one underneath. Okay, so that's 32 plus one. That gives you 33. A wee tip, if there's a one at the end, it's always going to be an odd number because the rest of them are all even. Right, question 11. What we've got is we've got a selection of pseudo code and there's a wee error here. Okay, so quite often they're looking at things like logic errors. So you can ride a school bus if your age is greater than 5 or if it's less than 18. So that's implying even if you're 70 or you're greater than 5. So that should be AND. Okay, so OR should be replaced with AND. Here's another one. So the type of construct. So we can construct programs using bits of code and a construct is just a block of code. Okay, it does a specific thing. What this is doing is this is asking you for your codes. Say it was like an ATM machine and it keeps on asking you until this condition is actually met. Okay, so this condition, if I can actually get back down to here, this condition is if the code is actually 7741. So it's a conditional loop. Next wee question, they're talking about ah, there's a spell mistake went in the code. If it's a spell mistake, that's called a syntax error. So you've got something wrong with your syntax. So you've instead of saying print, you might have said paint. Question number 14. So what we've got is a program, it's a wee warning sign. If your truck is higher than 200 centimetres and it's heavier than 2.4. Okay, so there's a bit missing here. Now they've actually give you, given you a wee space down here to actually write it, but if you've written it up there, don't worry. But what we've got is we've got three marks. Okay, so first mark is if the height is greater than 200. Okay, so remember the greater than sign. There's another mark for saying if weight is greater than 2.4. And you get your third mark if it's or. Okay, so it should be or, not an and. That was my mistake. Okay, so if height is greater than 200 or the weight is greater than 2.1. Now, the actual testing of this, okay, so normal, you're just thinking of it, your typical value that maybe a truck might weigh. Okay, so that's nothing to extreme. Right, so 100 or 2.2. Now the extreme, right, so I should have maybe picked my words better. Extreme is you actually test the condition. Okay, so 202.4 is fine for extreme. And exceptional is well, 250, 2.5. Now this is the example given in the marking scheme. You could even say like 2000. And 22. Okay, so it's something that is not the most sensible test data. Okay, so normal is a pretty bog standard input. Extreme, you're always testing the actual boundary. Right, so extreme, you're always just looking at what they're testing and just put these numbers down. And exceptional is something that shouldn't really be entered. Right, what we've got is Mary's decided to update her digital camera from 4 megapixels to 12. What's one advantage? Now, one advantage is you're going to have a higher resolution, right? So it's going to be better quality images. Disadvantage is it's going to take up a lot more space for each image. So you won't actually be able to save as many images on your card. Okay, so advantages is, is always better quality, right? But the disadvantage is you've got less images that you can store, okay? Because it takes up more memory, right? So that's your disadvantages there. Now this question, we missed out a line here, okay? So you've got int, you've got rnd, you've got round, we've got u case, we've got l case, and they're all examples of predefined functions. 
Question 18. You're wanting to store 23.8, okay, 23.8 decimal point. So you can either say single or you can say real. Okay, if you try and remember single, it's got a, a wee dot above it like a decimal point. Okay. To remember that though, you need to remember string is not for numbers. And what's a suitable data type, the data structure? 100 test marks. Well, that is an array. Okay, so an array allows you to store more than one piece of data, but it has to always be the same data type. Okay, so an array for one mark. And it's going to be test scores, in which you're not going to have a test score of like 12.2. So it's going to be whole numbers, so that's an integer. So a variable is a structure if it's only one piece of data. If you've got a number of pieces of data of similar data type, just use an array, and that's the data type is integer. Hey, right, what we've got is we've got a piece of code, and it's for temperature of food. It's exciting as ever. And what they're saying is, well, what happens if they detect 63 degrees? Okay, so it's going to be getting read from a sensor. So if it's 63, well, it checks the condition, right? So if temperature is less than 82 to the following. So obviously 63 is less than 82. So once it's checked the condition, it then displays a wee message. So it'll be display temperature too low, continue to reheat, and I'll ask for another, or it will take another reading. Okay, so it's not from a keyboard, so it's not asking the user, but it'll take another reading. And that's what the program does. Okay, so you just really write it how you see it really with this as much detail as you can. This one here is about chicken, right? So chicken eat chickens eat five kilograms of grain per month. Okay, and there's a some omissions from this actual program. So what we've got, I'll just try and scroll down, they're saying the data num the data types. So what we've got number of chickens. Now you're not going to get two and a half chickens or two point three. So it has to be an integer that's going to hold the number of chickens. The price per kilo, well, it's not always going to be a whole number, so that's going to be real, or you can say single, okay? And if you look up here, full price, what they're asking is if full price is true, okay, or if full price is false, so remember the variable type, if it's true or false, or yes or no, and that is known as Boolean. Okay, now we're then saying, well, what lines can contain a conditional statement? So a conditional statement is almost like a question the program's asking. So a full price equals true, that's a condition. Okay, so if that condition is satisfied, it does the following. And if full price is equal false, that's a condition. So the program is really asking a question about the data, and depending on the answer to that question, it does a specific task. Then asking, well, the total price wants to be held for each month. So think about, just as I've said, if there's a lot of data that's going to be held and it's going to be the similar type of data, then just use your use an array, and it's going to be the total price. And well, think about the total price. It might have a decimal point in it. So think of that as being single. Okay. And for it to actually have a program asking you for the total price for each month, we're going to use a fixed loop. And the reason why is because we actually know how many times this loop is going to go through. Okay, so we know it has to loop 12 times. So that's why we use a fixed loop. Okay, because we know it's going to loop that number of times. And last but not least. So we're going to have a program that's going to calculate the potential profit of a soft drink. So the first question is, it's just asking you how many variables. So what you do is you just can highlight it. So that's a separate variable. This is one, so that's two, three, four, five, and we've got six because manufacturing costs is already mentioned that there so we've got six variables now using pseudo code or a program of your choice write down a program to enter the data required 
we need your inputs, right? So we need to receive water cost, labor cost, labor cost, and selling price because manufacturing cost is calculated, and so is the profit. Okay, so we go receive, right? So this is all your inputs. Once you've received them, you can then calculate your manufacturing cost and your profit, and that's using set, right? So set manufacturing cost to so essentially this part of it is just the formula you've got here but instead of an equal sign it's two and then we're just going to send the profit to the display okay so we're going to then output the profit and hopefully that's helped you with your test just to say with this bit you just really tick off that pseudocode if you wrote it in visual basic you just mark that section